Niblack 57 YouTube channel, we're going to install our first forged rod and piston Vortec 4200 into the station wagon, along with our new Artec exhaust manifold and Precision Turbo, all in an effort to get ready for sick week. This thing's going to rip, guys. Right, guys before we start today's episode we need to talk this car has been down for a little while simply because uh, it hasn't been running right as you guys may have seen we took this car on Midwest drags last year which is a drag and drive event that took place in Ohio and Indiana and we did fairly decent but we didn't really meet my goal of going eight in the quarter mile the issue was we couldn't get the thing to make consistent power. It would sort of get onto the top end and sort of surge. After doing some diagnosis, I thought that the boost controller may be causing the issue. I have always been running a four port boost controller on this car. And as you'll see in the next clip, it was not providing very stable control. When I set up the Mac valve in the Mac CCU software, I just hit the drop down for Mac valve and I didn't really consider what frequency it was sending to the valve. As I found out, I think it feeds it 15 hertz, which with a four port is not really recommended. So I changed it to 30 hertz per uh, Matt's recommendation from Sloppy Mechanics, and it didn't really control any better. So all that to say, after a ton of investigation, I don't know if the issue is the boost controller or the motor, the motor is not going to meet my power goals because a stock bottom end is only good for around 800 wheel horsepower and I want to make more than that. So we are going to replace both the boost control system and the motor and hopefully kill one bird with two stones. So let's get to work on that. Now that we have our new motor installed, I am very happy with how everything laid out. I must say these new Artec manifolds are freaking sweet. Like honestly, these things are worth every penny. 
They package extremely well. They put the turbo in a uh, very aesthetically pleasing location and they provide tons of room for you to work around. Now, as I was talking about earlier, we converted the car to a three port boost controller as well. And now that we have primed the thing with oil, it is time to do the first start. All right, I took one. We do need All right, guys, so let's go over the changes that we had to make with the new turbo and new turbo manifold. As you see here, we converted to a Gen 2 Precision 7675 ball bearing turbo. And because of that, it is a smaller package than the VS Racing 8082 that we had on the car. And because of that, uh, along with the relocation of the turbo, we had to do a little bit of uh, modification to the compressor outlet in order to get the uh, compressor outlet to match up with our original intercooler tubing. Also, the Precision Turbo has a three inch outlet, so I had to immediately step it up to the four inch diameter uh, down tube that we had originally on the car. Also, the compressor inlet is a four inch and I had a five inch tube, so I had to install a adapter coupling there to adapt to our five inch uh, cold air intake. Also, I had to drill the RTEC manifold for our EGT probes. Moving on, the old manifold had a twin wastegate setup, and it was a total pain in the butt to work on down here. And the RTEC manifold has this really nice single wastegate, which we have already uh, sorted that out. Basically, I had to replumb that for a single wastegate, and then I had to make a wastegate discharge tube that was uh, you know, a little bit larger since it's a single wastegate. Since we plan to take this car to sick week next month, one of the rules for that event uh, that is different than Midwest Drags is if you plan to go faster than a 999, you are required to have a engine diaper or uh, some sort of belly pan to catch any fluids that may be leaking out of the engine or hopefully catch any rods or pistons that may be exiting the block because you uh, sent it a little too hard. So when I was making my wastegate discharge tube, something that I had to consider was I need to uh, consider that I am going to be installing a belly pan on this thing and I needed to uh, sort of keep it up and out of the way and get it out to the side and away from where my belly pan will be. 
You really don't want your wastegate to be discharging into your belly pan, which uh, may be filled with uh, oil, because oil is uh, flammable. <laughs> so the idea here is to snake it through the K-member here and get it out and away from where the belly pan will be. I think the car turned out pretty decent. Um, we made a bunch of changes and I'm pretty happy with how it all shook out. Another thing that we need to talk about is how quickly the car now spools. In the solid color, we have how the car performed with the stock cylinder head, my fabricated exhaust manifold, and the VS Racing 8082 turbo. In the dashed lines, we have how it is performing now, and it has a Artec T4 manifold, a Precision 7675, ball bearing turbo and a faster proms fully ported cylinder head in this orange color here is my throttle position in this yellow color here we have the rpm of the engine and in this red color we have the uh, fuel duty cycle if we go from the time when i floor it to the time that it hits the two-step the car previously took 6.3 seconds to spool to 4400 rpm and now it is taking 3.2 seconds to get to 4600 rpm so we've roughly cut the time for the car to get onto the two-step in half Another thing to talk about here was with the old combo, I was only ever able to get to 12 PSI of boost on the two-step. And with the new combo, I am able to easily get to 15 PSI, and that is also on a ported cylinder head. As you can see here, my fuel duty cycle is like right around 28% with the old combo and the new combo is around 36 percent fuel delivery is directly related to the amount of air that's flowing through the engine so obviously we're getting a ton more airflow out of that precision 76 75 turbo and it's getting there a whole lot faster not only is the precision turbo contributing to this increased airflow but one of the selling points for the Artec T4 manifold is that it allows you to spool the turbo faster because the runners are optimized for that type of performance. Needless to say, I'm going to have to turn this thing down quite a bit if I want to keep my rear bumper. Something else that I'll have to be careful with is how quickly the boost will now ramp in so i may need to implement some sort of uh, ramping strategy in order to uh, not bring the boost in too quickly and uh, power wheelie the car 
So hopefully in the very near future, we will be getting this car onto the dyno and hopefully we can shake this thing down so that it is ready for sick week, which is uh, just about a month from now. We also have to get the Volvo done for the same event. Uh, and if you guys are in the area for sick week, uh, make sure you check out and see if you're close to one of the tracks for one of the five days. We will hopefully be making it through all five days. And hopefully, uh, if you're in the area, you can stop by and say hi. I am super pumped to uh, get both cars onto the track and see how they perform. Uh, frankly, I am super happy with how the RTEC manifold sounds and how it is performing. That turbo spools so much faster than the old one. I am so stoked. Make sure that you like, subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, consider hitting the join button, and maybe buy a t-shirt. You'll be seeing this car again very soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that. We'll see you in the next one. The Artec T4 Vortec 4200 manifolds are now live on the website and they're selling out fast. So you better go get yours. Links are in the description. If they sell out, there will be a form for you to enter your contact information so that you can be notified as soon as they become in stock again. Let's make this engine combo blow up, guys. Thanks a bunch. Happy New Year.